I know, I know, it's a bold title. Cardano will die without this. And what I'm talking about, I'm not going to wait to seven minutes in the video to tell you, is decentralization. Now that you're clicked on the video, let's cover what this means without decentralization, how Cardano would falter, and what exactly going on right now involving Cardano decentralization is going to allow Cardano to prosper rather than die. In today's video, we're going to be going over a thread by Axo Trade. If you want to check out the thread, it will be linked down in the description. But first things first, what is decentralization? Cardano is going to die without it, so we should probably cover what it means to be a decentralized protocol and decentralized in nature. The philosophy of blockchains in general, the thing underpinning blockchains is that no one person could or should be in power as this leads to abuses and small groups like we have in our everyday lives now forming that power and abusing it. So we don't want to see that. We want a more decentralized approach, a less centralized approach. Instead, every user in a decentralized ecosystem is given the ability to decide the best course of action for themselves. Now, here's centralized. Here is decentralized. So this is one person making the decisions for all these people. And then here's quite the opposite. Everyone in their own ecosystem and doing their own thing and making their own decisions. The basics. Cardano is a decentralized network run by computers called stake pools. Shameless self plug. I have my own stake pool that you can stake with. It's the Jack stake pool. And I only run one of these. And I'll tell you why that's important in later in this thread. But essentially, Cardano is run by stake pools. They process transactions and mint blocks. Users can support these stake pools by delegating ADA and in turn, they receive a reward for keeping the network operational. This action is called staking. When you stake with a stake pool, you are essentially electing a leader for blocks to be minted and putting your trust in that stake pool that they are going to do right by you as well. But the kicker is you can change where you stake your ADA with at any time for just the network fee, which is less than like a couple of cents, and you can do it as much as you please. As I mentioned, you're in a sense voting for these pools. You can move it at any time. It's not locked. And how often a stake pool is to process transaction is based off their overall stake, including yours. So the larger the number, the more chances they are going to have to process transactions or rather min blocks. Stake pools are a great way of getting people support who want to support Cardano and the network. If you're supporting a stake pool operator, this makes them able to pursue their goals, myself included when people stake with Jack or someone stakes with Smog to make Pool PM, the website I'm using to show you Jack stake pool, Smog is behind this. They are going to further be able to pursue what they're doing because they're getting paid by the network to run the stake pool and the more people staking with them are going to give them more rewards in their operator fees. So this is great. This is awesome. We can elect people, we can reward them, we can support them for doing what they're building, and we can have systems that are enabled through this way of you know earning funds to make things on Cardano. Thing is, it is not perfect, at least not yet. There's still a lot of things to be done and a lot of people, including centralized forces, that take abuse of this, especially early players like centralized exchanges, building competitive advantages and absorbing delegation in a monopolistic fashion as their advantages compounded on themselves when they have their own stake pools using all that ADA pooled in from their users. They can then boost their own APRs uh, because it's essentially all them staking to themselves and they can take that for the protocol rather than you know putting it back into other stake pool operators that are running across the network. They essentially are making it more difficult because instead of staking to different stake pools that may be joining the network, they are making more of their own stake pools to support. This is called multi pools, and it's essentially when one operator has more than one stake pool, rather than allowing for other stake pool operators to join in on the force and increase decentralization because we have less or more individual actors, people are making multiple pools, and there's only a fixed max amount of pools that can profit profitably exist given ADA prices and also how many blocks are minted every you know day because only do you get rewards when blocks are minted from your pool and, and there's only so much ADA in circulation that can support a certain amount of stake pools to actually mint to block or multiple blocks every single five day period which is called an epoch here in Cardano. This creates the opportunity for monopolies to take advantage of this because in general, it is a zero sum game. I know myself, I am 
profiting from this. I get money every five days or ADA because I run the stake pool. So I'm not going to stand here like it's the worst thing ever. Obviously, it benefits me. But multiple stake pool operators are not good for Cardano decentralization. And as we mentioned at the top of the thread, what does it say? Without decentralization, Cardano will die. And these stake pool operators who have 10 pools, if Cardano dies, are not going to be earning any rewards because Cardano is dead. You see where I'm going here? However, here's the thing. Stake pool operators right now, especially when people cap out at certain points when they get to max saturation, as you can see here, my saturation is 8.7%. When this gets to 100%, anything past that stake to the pool, it loses rewards for the delegators and anyone delegating past that stake up stake amount. So if it's at 100%, you obviously shouldn't stake with the stake pool. But if operators have enough people or ADA to stake, they can open a new one to incentive because it's incentivized for themselves, right? Why wouldn't they open a new one? Because right now the structure of incentives says open a new one, get more rewards. And even if you're not at max supply, open a new one anyways, because the min fee is 340 ADA per block. And that could be even more if you have six pools at 20 million ADA rather than three pools at 60 million ADA max saturated. So people split their ADA up, they split their pools up, and they don't allow for as many people to join in on the force because they're focused on their own profits. But it's hard to villainize them completely because the protocol does, in a sense, incentivize this. But at the same time, this does worsen the economic outcome of everyone else on the network, and it is not good for decentralization, the crown jewel of Cardano and blockchains and crypto in general. If the network starts being controlled by single entities, aka the minimal attack vector is really low. Right now, I believe it's around 23 on Cardano. Bitcoin and Ethereum, it's less than five. So we're still doing good on that front. But the lower this goes, the more Cardano becomes endangered to losing decentralization, especially of the production in blocks and processing transactions, therefore. So much of a value proposition of crypto disappears if this disappears as it develops into an expensive and inefficient Excel spreadsheet rather than revolutionary censorship resistant tech. A lot of people all over the world are looking for alternatives, better ones that are not so centralized and based on institutions that have been playing the game and winning it against retail investors and retail in general over and over again. It's rigged against them. They're looking for something fair and more transparent. And crypto holds the promise of being this very thing. If it succeeds, institutions are going to embrace it. They're going to have to embrace it. And Cardano if it's decentralized, can be a large part of this push forward and being the better system. At the end of the day, institutions are going to go where the money is. If they see small fish in a crypto pond, they're going to embrace it if there's enough of them. JP Morgan went from having their CEO said he'd fire any trader for holding Bitcoin to having their own digital payments and blockchain division on JP Morgan. So, Interestingly enough, when things and tides change and people and money is involved, big, large institutions hop over quite quickly. The next evolution of all of this and a better system is going to be expanding past just being a space for gambling and speculation and guaranteeing a fair platform where financial applications are being built. We need a decentralized network for this and for digital assets that single entities can't tamper with and normal people can trust that is going to have to come from something other than a centralized bank or, you know, a big Excel spreadsheet where 10 people have access. We need something that truthfully, the participants in the network holding their stake can choose where the network goes and have a say in what their money is all about. Thing is, a lot of people don't like the responsibility. Digital assets present a radical departure from the status quo currently, where everybody holds your hands and takes your money from you, and users are given full control over their own actions in an age of overbearing government policies right now this is a breath of fresh air and very rewarding to have some responsibility the best things in life in my opinion are going to be the ones that require responsibility but there's also going to be risks and obligations here so people are going to have to tread carefully and lessons are going to be harsh to learn decentralization is essentially your choice do you want to follow the next big influencer or any influencer even myself do you want to listen to what i'm saying or do you want to form your own opinions? And especially when starting out, 
Decentralized finance and crypto can be very daunting. A lot of people are just going to go the supposed safety of centralized exchanges or the familiarity of large social media personalities with many stake pools because they think we can trust them and they don't want to overthink and go too far into any rabbit holes of making hard decisions. You have the ability to make decisions that do impact decentralization here on Cardano and in general. So just think about it, think what you're thinking about, and don't just go about everything as your favorite influencer does. Even myself, don't listen to me. I'm not that smart. I mentioned this earlier, but we also have the MAV, the minimum attack vector. Cardano's right now is 24. This is better than Ethereum, better than Bitcoin, as I mentioned, but the trend has been downwards, which is not good. We want to see this go up, 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 and away, not down. We're becoming less decentralized and losing what makes Cardano worth investing in and that is not good. The more decentralized we are, the less censorship can be given to the blockchain. And if the number goes up, this is a lot more incentivized for people to trust that Cardano is a layer where they can make their own decisions and have control of their money truthfully. And although you may think, oh, it's going down, but we're still so much better in Ethereum and Bitcoin. The truth is, once you get to the point where decentralization is lost, it is very hard to get back. It's like the environment. Basically, it's much easier to preserve it while we still have it than recover it once it's lost. And that's because people who are in control of the systems of, say, Ethereum and Bitcoin and have all this hash power or can create a minimum attack vector, these people are monopolies now. They have taken control. And to take it back, it's going to be 30 times harder than it would be to just have preserved it in the first place. In conclusion, decentralization is the primary value proposition of digital assets and cryptocurrencies in general. It might take a while for it to be valued pro properly by the market because right now we have other coins that aren't decentralized at all that have been crashing recently and they are valued by the market heavily. But the day will come where decentralization is realized as the pillar of crypto and digital assets, the true value of them because you're NFTs, as we've seen recently, are only worth as much as the blockchain they're built upon. And the amount of decentralization of that blockchain is very important to keep your assets yours and safe. But it's going to be up to you. It's going to be up to me. It's going to be up to us to decide whether we'll be ready when the day comes or if we're caught unprepared with our MAV hanging low. So choose your stake pools wisely on Cardano. We don't want this to be the death of us. We got a long way to go here and a lot of things to build and decentralization, keeping this at the forefront of Cardano is very important. It always is, but this is another video to remind you to stake with a single pool operator. It doesn't have to be Jack, it could be Smog, it could be Barry, it could be a million other ones. Do your own research, find your own pool, stake with one you like, and maybe make sure they're not gonna make a second pool if they get saturated. That's always a good thing to check too. Anyways, see you guys in tomorrow's video. It's been your friend Jack. Axo thread down in the description with the link. And I'll see you guys later.